Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to see you all back here as we come to the final part of this Doha Forum. And it begins with one of the world's most renowned ministers of foreign affairs. He is recognized by his peers, his friends, and his adversaries alike as the diplomat par excellence, the quintessential diplomat. And you might argue he'd have to be, considering all of the extraordinary challenges that his country faces. It is a great pleasure to welcome to the stage the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Javad Zarif. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Distinguished friends and colleagues, it's a great pleasure to participate again in the Doha Forum. I congratulate my dear brother, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman, and our Qatari friends for organizing this remarkable gathering and thank them for their gracious hospitality. While we enjoy tranquility and security here in the heart of West Asia, our region is in severe turmoil. I believe the root cause of the multiple and chronic crises we face lies in a cognitive disorder. And for that reason, I believe this forum provides a unique opportunity to try to uncover our presumptions, deconstruct our assumptions, and think together on a way out of the current regional predicament. The first and foremost persistent cognitive disorder from which almost all of us suffer is the zero-sum approach to global issues. Far too many continue to believe that even in our interconnected world, where everything from trade and the environment to information and even emotions are globalized, one can gain at the expense of others. This is really a cognitive disorder. That one can have security through depriving one's own neighbors of the same. That has never worked. It will never work. Security, just like climate change, does not know borders and is thus indivisible. Furthermore, the disparities in power, geographic size, natural and human resources and the like among countries in our region have led to disastrous conclusions. Some global actors look at these disparities and the unending rivalries in the region as an opportunity. Indeed, as providing a fertile ground to expand their military presence and to sell more weapons to nearly all sides. But this outside presence has neither enhanced the security of the outside actors nor the security of our region. Indeed, it has only led to disaster after disaster. From the downing of an Iranian civil airliner by the USS Vincennes in 1988, to the rise in extremism as a natural consequence of the US presence and perceived occupation in Iran and Afghanistan. An outcome we had predicted as early as 2001. As for weapons trade, the Persian Gulf states accounted for nearly one quarter of 
all global arms imports during 2014-2018, almost doubling on average as compared to the preceding five years, which was already high. The United States obviously sold most of these lethal arms. But the real question is, and for people who believe there are spreadsheet people, they should answer this question. Have these vast U.S. arms sales to the region recovered anything even remotely close to the $7 trillion that President Trump himself has acknowledged as having been wasted in our region by the United States since 2001? That's, an, that's a question that can easily be answered by just counting. To be fair, global powers do not have a monopoly over this cognitive disorder. Unfortunately, nobody does. Some regional actors consider disparities as an opportunity to achieve regional hegemony. Saddam Hussein's invasions of Iran and Kuwait, the Saudi blockade against Qatar, and the war in Yemen are but examples of catastrophic miscalculations to use misperceived disparities to achieve regional hegemony. And most in this region, enjoying abundance of wealth, believe that everything can be bought. Certainly arms, including the most sophisticated ones, can be purchased in abundance. Sadly, even some foreign policies can be bought by the highest bidder. But can security be purchased? Can regional stability be bought? Distinguished friends, none of us, nor the global community at large, have benefited from this prevailing paradigm of exclusion, rivalry, and unending arms race. We in Iran, very much like our friends in Qatar, believe that we need a fundamental paradigm shift in our region, based on a cognitive readjustment and recognition of the imperative of a regional security and cooperation arrangement under the United Nations umbrella. This is not now, and this is not a new thinking. Indeed, we have proposing this to the United Nations since 1985. The recent proposal of our president to launch the Hormoz Peace Endeavor, or HOPE, is a continuation of our long-standing commitment to an inclusive and comprehensive regional framework for constructive engagement. HOPE is based on the recognition of the responsibility of every state in the region to ensure peace, stability, and prosperity in our neighborhood and to benefit from it. It is based on the assumption that the region and the world have a common and vital interest in maintaining freedom of navigation and energy security for all. Through hope, our aspiration is to promote mutual understanding, to ensure the territorial integrity, political independence, and international boundaries of all regional states, to cooperate in eradicating terrorism, extremism, and sectarian violence, and to promote peaceful resolution of all regional tensions and conflicts through enhanced communication and agreed early warning systems. 
To achieve these objectives, we propose adherence to common principles, such as dialogue, mutual respect, equal footing, respect for each other's sovereignty, rejection of the threat or use of force, or other means of coercion, and non-aggression and non-intervention in the internal or external affairs of one another. We in Iran believe that a new regional approach should be the outcome of collective deliberations. President Rouhani has shared our initial thoughts with the leaders of all literal states of the Persian Gulf, all, all seven of them, excluding Iran, inviting them to enrich these ideas and participate in their implementation. We can agree to establish joint task force regarding practical measures to gradually expand cooperation and confidence. We should involve our private sector and academia in formulating and implementing innovative ideas. We should use fora like this to collectively elaborate the principles and the roadmap. We can envisage a broad spectrum of cooperation areas, from energy security to arms control, early warning systems, and the establishment of WMD free zones. We can propose and agree upon confidence building measures on the CSCE model, from water management to nuclear safety, or even military contacts and visits. We can begin the process or culminate our endeavors, whichever we choose, with the conclusion and the signing of an inclusive, non-aggression and non-intervention pact among what we would like to call the Hormuz community. Distinguished friends, while many can argue that a paradigm shift based on regional cooperation and confidence building may not be realistic, they do not have much to show for the real politic paradigm that has repeatedly been tried and failed over and over again in the past four decades. There is a caveat I have to mention. Like the nuclear accord, no good idea can be pursued by only one party, and no agreement can be implemented by only one side. My friends, short-sighted behavior is unfortunately contagious. While everybody could benefit and could have benefited from the paradigm shift that the Joint Comprehensive Program of Action, JCPOA, promised as a foundation and not a ceiling. It cannot be expected from a single party to be forthcoming while others are pursuing an opposite path. The same applies to this region. We all need to change our thinking. We all need to change our approach. We all need to change our mentality. No single country can do this alone. We have an opportunity before us, my friends, to finally and decisively change course for the betterment of not just our own lives, but also those of the future generations. We must seize this opportunity, and with vigor. Thank you very much for your attention.